worship center. Hallelujah. We want you to just take a quick minute just to give God glory and honor. Hallelujah. And we just want to declare, God, we're so grateful to you, God, that you've been better to us sometimes, God, than we've been to ourselves, God. You've been better than good to me. I can say that for myself. I don't know about you. We just want to sing this little song. We ask that you just stop what you're doing and just give God glory with us. Hallelujah.
that you've been better than good to me. Yes, 
God. Hallelujah. I get excited when I think about the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you've been good. Look back over my life. My God. Thank God you've been so good. So good, so good, so good. so good Lord you are good you've been better than good I can't praise you enough I owe you my life can't praise you enough even if I tried cause you've been so So many doors you open, so many ways. 
you've been so good. Lord, you've been so good. You've been so good. Someone once said, I just can't tell it all. You've been so good. You've been so good. Hallelujah. Lord, you're taking me around dangerous seen and unseen. You watched over me as I slept and slumber. You keep me all the day long. Lord, you've been so good. We just want to say thank you today. Thank you for the ways that you made. Thank you for the doors that you opened. Thank you for the time that you healed me. Lord, you've been so good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God that you are, God. God, we just want to say thank you today. Thank you for your hands being upon us, God. Thank you, Lord, Father God, that you never left us. But you said you'd be with us always, God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you've just been so good. Lord, we just want to come together, Lord, today, Lord, and say thank you. Thank you for all the things that you've done. Oh, glory be to your name today. Lord, how you called us out of darkness into your marvelous light, Lord. Lord, we thank you how you gave us a reasonable portion of life, health, and strength. Hold us in our right mind today. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we have our eyes that we can lift to the hills from which come for our help, God. Thank you today that we have our mind that serve you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory be to your name today. Lord, you are the mighty God, Lord. Lord, you are our Father, Lord. Our Lord, there is none like you in all the earth, God. Lord, we look to you, Lord. For Lord, you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last, Lord. And, Lord, you are concerned about our lives, Lord. Oh, glory to your name today. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for everyone under the sound of my voice today. Lord, whatever the need is today, Lord, we come to cast our cares upon you. Let us not lead the same way we came, God. Oh, glory be to your name, Father. Father, send a word, Lord, that will convict our hearts, mind, soul, and spirit. They will turn us back unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we are work undone, Lord, Father God. Lord, we come to you, for you are the pot and we are the clay. Lord, work a wonder in our life on today in the name of Jesus. Lord, Father God, we have, Father God, prayers, Father God, that we want you to answer today. 
So hear our cry today. Oh, glory be to your name. God, we thank you, Lord, that you hear each one of us, Lord. You can meet all of our needs today. Lord, we pray, Father God, for those who are tuning in by social media today. Whatever their hearts desire today, Father God, they will give it unto you, Lord. Hear that cry, Lord. Lord, make a way out of no way. Oh, glory be to your name today. We come today, Lord, to bind the hands of the enemy, Lord. Pull down strongholds, loose every shackle, destroy every yoke today. That so easily beset us, God. But while we come together as one strong man today, Lord, Father God, to lift you up. For you said if you be lifted up, you draw all men unto you. So, Lord, we ask you to have your way today, Lord. Bless each one of us, Lord. Father, bless, Father God, our pastors, Lord. Lord, bless, Father God, each one in their respective place, Lord. Each partner, each member, Lord. Glory be to your name today, Lord. We ask you, Father God, to save today, to deliver today, to set free today. Lord, we thank you for being a forgiving God, a loving God. Looking beyond our faults and meeting our needs, God. And Lord, we come today because we love you, Lord. Lord, we love you because you first loved us, God. Oh, glory be to your name today. Lord, we know, Father God, we can do nothing without you, Lord. But Lord, we need you today. Lord, we need you to show up today, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Pour out your blessings upon us, Lord. And Lord, we give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor today. Lord, just have your way in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You ought to give God some praise this morning. But he's a worthy God. He's a magnificent God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for his love and kindness towards us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Down in my spirit, I hear the Lord say, what is the day? Do you know what the day is? Do anybody know what the day is? If you don't know, the Lord said, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He gave us another opportunity to give him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, this time, praise God. I want to thank God for all of you who have came out today to be in the worship service this morning. Amen. For those of you who are tuning in by social media, but it's not by coincidence that you are tuning in today or you're here in person, praise God. It was ordained by God. But I believe that God has something for you today to encourage you to run on and see what the end is going to be. We know we're living in a trying time, amen. And the world is in a lot of chaos right now. So God, he wants us to stand up today. Hallelujah. He wants to be what he called us to be. We got to call heaven down to the earth because the world is in trouble right now. So I thank for each and every one of you today who will come together this morning to give God praise. We come to honor him, amen, and to lift him up. Glory be to your name. I want to thank you once again for tuning in today to the Life Center, amen. I pray that God was a sent a word, sent a song, or just a, a smile or a handshake that may encourage you today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. For it's a joy to be in God's house. It's a joy to be in God's house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God at this time. It's offering time, amen. We want to give everybody an opportunity to do what God has called you to do. The Lord said that he wants you to give back unto him what he has blessed you to give. You know, everyone can't give the same amount because everyone has been blessed the same amount. Amen? So God said what he has, how he has blessed you, he would like for you to give back unto him. Good measures pressed down and shaken together shall men give back unto you. You know, it's a cycle. If we do our part, God will always do his part. Hallelujah. You know, Deuteronomy 16 and 17 verse said, give as you have been blessed. Hallelujah. So we don't put no pressure on no one. Give as you have been blessed. But he wants you to give, amen? So that you may continue to be blessed. Hallelujah. For our God loves the cheerful giver. And we know when we give, it feels good to give. 
It feels good to be able to give. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So praise God on our screen today. There's going to be four ways to give. Amen. Hallelujah. But we know everyone is not here in person. But if you're here in person, praise God, you can put your uh, offering in the uh, envelope and give in the receptacle on your way out the door. Amen. But if you're tuning in by online, you can give online. You can give by text to give. You can give by... <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. The devil is a liar. You can give by cash out. Amen. Either way you give, God will still bless you. Hallelujah. So praise God. This time we're going to pray about our offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. God, we thank you for these you'll give us, Lord, who you are blessed, Father God, will see to give. Lord, we ask you, Father God, if it leads their hand but not their life, Lord, that you will open doors and make ways continuously, Father God, for them to prosper, God. And, Lord, we give you the glory right now, Lord, Father God, for whatever, Father God, you desire to use this offering, Father God, for Lord. Lord, let it please you, Lord. And, Lord, Father God, let each one of us give our tithes, Father God, have you are commanded in your words, Lord. And, Lord, we give you the thanks and the glory right now, Lord, Father God, for being a God, Father God, of your word, Lord. And, Lord, we thank you right now, Lord, Father God, for each one that will have a seed to sow. And, Lord, Father God, those who have a desire, Father God, who may not have today, Lord, Father God, you will open up a door and make a way for them. These three things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. We ought to continue to give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You know, we've been singing all morning how good God is, amen? And he's not only just good, but he's a good, good father, amen? Can we just thank God for that? Can we just take a minute and just praise him for that? Can we just take a minute and just praise him for that? Can we just take a minute and just praise him for that? That he is a good, good father. That he loves you even when you mess up, God still loves you, hallelujah. That he doesn't keep no record of wrong, hallelujah. That his love never fails, hallelujah. That his love is patient, his love is kind, his love never ends, hallelujah. He is a good, good father, hallelujah. If you know he's a good, good father, just begin to stand up where you are, in line stream, just begin to exhort his name, hallelujah. Father God, we praise you, oh God. Because you are good, good Father. A one who loves us in spite of our mess. Hallelujah. The one who picks us up out of our sin. Hallelujah. A good, good Father. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We celebrate your name on today. Hallelujah. You're a good, good Father. Hallelujah. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of one day. Think you're like, but I heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of the night. Cause you tell me that you're pleasing that I'm never.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. All over this building, if you can, rest on your feet. And I want you to just say that one more time. He's a good father. That's who he is. Come on, help us say that right now. All over this building, who you are? He's a good father. That's who you are. Yes, he is. is he, has he been a good father to anybody? That's who he is. Yes, Lord. Heads about. Father, we enter in by and through the precious blood of the Lamb. We come boldly to the throne of your grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help us, to aid us, to assist us through this life's journey. Father God, I give you liberty to think through my mind and to speak through my vocal cords, that it be all of you and none of me. And Father God, as we enter in by and through the precious blood of the Lamb, today we've come to commune with you. We've come to fellowship with you, Lord God, and with precious one another. And Lord God, as you do what only you can do, may your love plead our case every day. May you do exceedingly abundantly above all that we dare ask or think according to the power of your gracious and unfailing love towards us. We're believers and not doubters. We trust your word, Lord God, without a second thought. Continue to do a new thing and who will allow it to spring forth. In this spring season, oh God, change us, transform us, rearrange us as only you can in Jesus' name. And the people of God agree and say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to gather your Bibles. I want you to read with me this passage of Scripture. Gather your Bibles, your smart devices. Let's turn back to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And I want to pick it up at verse 12. We're going to be at the same place we were on Wednesday. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 12 through 17. We're going to read together. Amen. We have it on the screen for you. When you have it, say amen. I didn't hear you. Amen. All right. Let's read together. O oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. Pause there. Here there are 12 words here, 12 words. We're going to finish reading 12 words that really become the prayer of King Jehoshaphat. They become a prayer of King Jehoshaphat, 12 words. Verse 13, he continues his discourse and he says, And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. I want to give you some context here. Here it is. King Jehoshaphat understands and knows that he and the, and the kingdom of Judah have been surrounded by the northern kingdom where there are ten tribes. Amen. Here you've got Judah and Benjamin in the southern kingdom. And this is where Israel, the twelve tribes, have been divided. In, in the northern kingdom, there are ten tribes and then the southern, there are just two, Judah and Benjamin. And so it becomes significant here that King Jehoshaphat, he's not just standing there praying, but you must understand he's a king. He's standing in front of the people praying. I want you to paint a picture here. Next verse. He then says, then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, and the son of Jael, the son of Madaniah, a Levite, he's one of the priests, and a prophet, 
of the sons of Asaph came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, Judah, they were in Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. Why shouldn't I be afraid, Lord? He tells us. For the battle is not yours, but God's. The battle is not yours, but God's. Next verse. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, he tells them this twice, nor be dismayed, tomorrow go out against them. He tells them that twice. So pause here for a moment, take your seats. He says, for the Lord will be with you. It's amazing when God says, I'm going to be with you through your stuff. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you from this place. Praise God through the crisis. Amen. Praise God through the crisis. On Wednesday, I shared with us from the same place of Scripture, the test of being overwhelmed. You see, when you're overwhelmed, it's because you're in a crisis situation. And here it is, King Jehoshaphat, a king, he not only submits himself to God, but he humbles himself in the presence of God and before the people of God. And he says, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray. Amen. In the middle of a crisis situation, a moment, we take a king out of his native place and condition because when there's a battle, kings go to war. But instead of that place, he finds himself in a situation where he says, hold on a minute, hold on. Uh -uh. I cannot be conventional in what I'm doing. I cannot do what everybody expects me to do. I'm going to do what they don't expect me to do, and I'm going to pray. And then I'm going to ask the people to pray, and then I'm going to ask the people not only to pray, but to pray and fast with me. So my goal this morning is very simple as I unfold the scripture and the word of God. Look at the name and say, praise God through the crisis. Praise God through the crisis. That's, you know, when you got trouble on your hand, uh, it's hard sometimes to even pray. And then you want to tell me about praising God? It's hard enough that I want to get beyond my situation and circumstance, but now you're asking me to praise God and to pray and to fast at the same time. Can I tell you something today that even in the midst of how you feel, it is necessary to praise God? The goal here again is, uh, as I share this with you, is that when we're in a crisis, we must understand and learn that we have to turn to the Lord when a crisis hits. But I don't just turn to God. I need to praise him as he takes care of the problem for us, for me, and be reminded of God's constant faithfulness no matter the circumstances. You see, no matter what the circumstances of life are, God is still always faithful. A crisis is something that every one of us goes through to some degree at some stage in our life. Probably at multiple points in our life, we might go through a crisis. The world panics and doesn't know what to do. All too often we see this when a crisis hits. Overwhelmed by what's going on around us, the crisis hits, and we're stuck trying to figure out what do I do. Jehoshaphat already told us, he says, Lord, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. Yes, Lord, I'll say that too. There comes a time in your life, in my life, and in our lives where the face of God has to be bigger than the problem we're facing. I'm going to say that again. The face of God has to be bigger than the problem that we're facing. I'm going to say it one more time on this side. 
the face of God, the God that I see, the God that I know has to be bigger than the problems that I'm facing. He has to be bigger than the insufficiency of life because he is God. And until I understand and embrace that, I'll always be at a place of seeing the problems of life bigger than what they really are. And when I become fixated on the problems of life, I've been distracted so much so that I cannot see God as he is. It's not enough for the enemy to get our minds off of the word of God. But when our eyes are taken off of the God that we know, not just the God that we see. Yes, Lord, I'll say that too. You see, the God that I see, I can only see him based on what his word reveals to me. At no point in time has any man seen God. But the God that I see, I have to have him reveal to me through the theater of God's word. And so if I don't spend any time in his word, the God that I see, he might be real small. And my problems might be real big. Amen. And so <laughs> here's the thing today, child of God. When we're probably facing down a crisis, it's probably not a military crisis. Come here, Ukraine. We didn't ask for the fight, but we're not going to just sit here. Everybody going to take up weapons to protect what belongs to us. We're not going to just roll over. I came to tell somebody this morning, this is not the time for you to just roll over. This is not the time to roll over and to say, I don't know what the God's going to do. I don't know if he can do anything. I am here to tell you that he is still yet God. Anybody ever felt like you're at the breaking point of life and you're trying to say, God, I need you to do something. Move a, shake a table, move a leg, do something. It don't make me no different what you do, but just let me know you're here. Make the wind blow, something. It don't matter. Jehoshaphat, he was in a tough situation. And it was a situation that was beyond his abilities. You see, if I'm going to praise God through a crisis, I will understand that there are times in my life that no matter how smart I am, how smart you are, how smart we are, how much ability we got, how much time, how much money, there are things that are beyond us. And in order for you and I to see the end of our faith, We've got to trust God. We've got to rest in the finished work of the Lord Jesus. We have to have a conversation with God and cry out to the only God, the only true and living God who is able to do something about my situation and yours. I share some things with you on this past uh, Wednesday that I, think, uh, that I believe was still appropriate. Uh, let me share a couple of things. As soon as Jehoshaphat called the people to turn to the Lord, change started happening. All right, All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's easy for us to go our own way. Any of us left to our own devices, we just do whatever we want to do. But when we come back to the place of God, he shares the heart of God and reveals to us through his word how we are to operate. The same formula that Jehoshaphat followed, we too must follow. God is always faithful. He's always faithful and he's always present in our situation, even when you don't know it, even when you don't feel like it. God doesn't require secret formula or strategy. All he requires is us to depend on him. I'll say that again. All God requires is for us to depend on him. Anybody ever been comfortable in life? Raise your hand. Anybody ever been comfortable in life? This is not a trick question. Anybody ever been comfortable in life? Isn't it amazing how things that you don't want to happen happen when you're comfortable? 
If you take the foot off the gas when you're driving a car, what happens to the car? What happens to the car? It slows down and ultimately the car stops. Well, that's what happens when we get comfortable. The car slows down and then ultimately it stops. Our relationship with God can't be the car that we take the foot off the gas. We have to keep our foot on the gas of relationship, of where we're spending time with God, where we're in the presence of God, where we're praising him in the middle of all of the madness and any and everything that goes on in life. It is in those moments of life where we become stronger in the things of God and in our relationship with God. But all too often, instead of us doing that, what we do is we decide you know what, I'm going to try to solve the problem. Instead of solving the problem, why not praise the God who is in the midst of the problem with you? Oh, you're hearing what I'm saying. There are some things that I want to just give you right right off the top, right out of the gate. You see, when you were talking about praising God through the crisis, there are some basic things, some constructual things constructive things that we have to do. Number one, we have to resolve to trust God completely. We have to resolve to trust God completely in prayer. You see, in 2 Chronicles 20, verses 3 through 12, he really begins to pray in verses 3 through 12. We have to resolve to trust God completely in prayer. Can I tell you something? Prayer is one of our greatest weapons. It's one of the greatest weapons that children of God have It is such a powerful key that gives us victory in every oppressive situation. Here's what Lord Alfred Tennyson said. Alfred Lord Tennyson, he said this, more things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. So when we're facing overwhelming odds and the crisis of life comes against us, there's only one thing to do, keep on praying. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. There are times in our life, Brother Hicks, where God allows overwhelming odds and staggering circumstances to come against us in order to drive us to our knees. Secondly, secondly, I receive a specific word for the situation. You know, we, we, we sing in the church, I need a word from the Lord. I don't just need any word. If I've got a specific problem, I need a specific word. Amen. I don't want, I don't want, you know, there are times where your GPS gets you close to the location. I don't want to be close. I want to be right there where I need to be. So I need a specific word for a specific situation, glory to God. I don't want to be roundabout. And then I got to spend the next 15 to 20 minutes trying to figure out, do I need to make a detour over here? Do I need to come over here? I want to be clear about where I'm going. Jehoshaphat needed to be clear about what God was going to do. More importantly, do understand this. Even in the midst of three armies coming against them, the Moabites, the Ammonites, all of these who were coming against them, he still had a military battle ready army but they wouldn't gonna have to be fighting what i don't want you to misunderstand is you read the scripture and you say well they just showed up well they did show up but they were ready to fight too you see we sometimes take a lens into scripture And we don't get all the details. That's why I came right back to the same place because there's so much in here, it wasn't necessary for me to come and preach something else. You see, when I'm overwhelmed and the test of being overwhelmed comes against me, I stand, I stand out, and I see the salvation of God. But wait a minute, what else are you telling me? Am I going to just stand here and see the salvation of the Lord? No, you need to be praising me at the same time. And there is an army that you have at your disposal, they're just not going to have to fight. How many times are we ready to fight? We just, man, I'm ready to do something. I'm ready to fight. And the Lord says, uh-uh, uh-uh, I don't need you to do that. I don't need you to do that. I just, just, just stay right here. 
Just stay right here. But understand this, and I want to qualify this because so often in the body of Christ, we hear part of the verse. We hear part of the word. But we don't hear the whole word and get the counsel of the word. And we behave in one way without getting the totality of, hold on a minute. When I walk out here, I need to be ready to shoot somebody. I need to be ready to take a rag and a rock and hit a giant in the head. Glory to God. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. While I'm praising him and the joy of the Lord is coming upon me because I understand how much God loves me, I need to be here with my rag and my rock that when they cross this line, I need to be prepared to do something if the Lord tell me I need to do something. But all too often, we say, well, I'm just going to praise him. I'm just going to praise him. And you have to praise him. But you better knock somebody out. If the Lord say knock somebody out, you better knock them out. See, y'all didn't hear that part. You just, you just read that part and said they pray. Uh-uh. No, they were ready, glory to God, and prepare. Jehoshaphat had his army ready. No man going to war without first sitting down counting the cost. Let me say it this way. I'm going to praise God, but I will punch you. See, y'all missed that part. Because, see, we read Scripture and we just see, well, they stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Jehoshaphat was not sending Judah and Benjamin out here to stand there idly by. They were prepared based on whatever the Lord told them. My question to you today is, are you prepared whatever the Lord tells you? While praising him in the middle of your crisis, are you preparing to do what comes next? Not only receive a specific word for the situation as we see in verses 14 through 15, but then thirdly, we realize the battle is the Lord's. 2 Chronicles 20 and 15, Jehaziel says, you will not have to fight in this battle. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions. You take positions because you're the army. You're ready to fight. You're prepared to fight. You take up positions. Whether we got to throw rocks down from the mountaintop, whatever it is the Lord will have us to do, we're going to be ready to do it. And he says, take your position, but stand firm. And then see the deliverance the Lord will give you that he will give Judah and Jerusalem. He continued to emphasize that the battle is not yours. So I pause and I ask you this question that you ask yourself. Today is the day that we come to commune with the Lord. We commune with one another. And in doing that, the Bible says, let us examine ourselves. So my question this morning is this. Let us examine ourselves. And as we examine ourselves in this place of realizing that the battle is the Lord's, not ours, what fight am I prepared for? Am I prepared to fight the good fight of faith? Because every day there's a fight of my faith. You see, Jehoshaphat, because of the place of fear of three armies coming against Judah, Jerusalem, Because of that place, what he would not do, what he was unwilling to do, is to allow the feelings of fear to overtake his faith. You and I cannot allow fear of what we cannot see, of what we do not know, to overtake the faith of God that I don't have to see where he's taking me as long as I follow his leadership. Oh, you're hearing what I'm saying. And as I take the steps of faith, he reveals to me, come here, Abraham. Before his name was Abraham, he was Abram. And the Lord says, get thee to a place that I will show you. One of the things that I've understood about life is how circular life is. Anybody ever had dreams before? Here it is, three or four years later, you find yourself 
sitting somewhere saying, wait a minute, I've been here before. I've seen this picture before. I know what's supposed to happen next. It's what I call that matrix moment where you're like, I know what's about to happen. I know what my response should be. But you can only know that when we take time to remember what the Lord has done. You see, if I'm going to praise him, praising God through the crisis, I can't wait until the battle is won. I got to praise him when I am uncertain. I got to praise him while I'm praying. Here it is. The Lord speaks to Jehoshaphat through the prophet. And it tells them that when we go out to battle tomorrow, you're going to send Judah first. You're going to send the gospel choir first. You're going to send the praises first. That in and of itself is going to confuse the enemy because they expecting you to come with the chariots, uh, with the spears, with the shields and the swords and the rags and the rocks. That's what they're expecting you to do. They're not expecting you to send the praises first. It's amazing how we can confuse the enemy when we do what's uncommon and unconventional. He didn't send first the battle-tested army. He didn't send them first, but he sent the praises first. They were placed ahead of the army. I can imagine the Moabites and Ammonites and the others, they were looking at him saying, now that's a mess right there. We could, we could just kill all of them. They may have even laughed and wanted to mock him, but God is not mocked. I don't want to be laughing at what God does. I want to get the benefit of what God does because I embrace the fact that God says, just praise me. I got this over here. How many times instead of us praising God, we want to put our hands on and say, well, let me deal with this. Let me do this. Let me do the other. Let me do all of these things. And the Lord said, I need you to praise me. I need you to pray because you've been distracted long enough. Now I need you to praise me. I need you to pray. You've been distracted long enough. I need you to praise me. I need you to pray. You've been distracted long enough. And now, here it is, you got a crisis, and you're going to be further distracted. Don't let that happen. I know some of us are probably sitting here saying, well, I ain't in no crisis. Well, let me help us with that. A few things that you should write down. If you're dealing with something or going through something and you don't know what to do, you're in a crisis. I'm going to say it to this side. If you're going through something or dealing with something and you don't know what to do, you're going through a crisis. A crisis will often bring fear. We get afraid when we don't have the ability to fix something. I remember as a kid growing up, you know how you'd get told not to uh, watch the TV or not to do something? And uh, you do it anyway. Uh, I remember vividly uh, there was a time where a certain person would put a lock on on the power. You know, you know the two prongs that, that, that you plug in the wall to turn the TV on. Somebody would put a lock on it so, you, you know, you weren't supposed to watch TV. But we, but we, 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 we began to think through that process. That was something called the hanger. You take the hanger, you pick the lock, you plug the TV up. You turn the TV on. You watch TV when you have school. But there's a problem. The TV hot. <laughs> you didn't plan for the TV being hot. So you come home, you reach behind the TV, and you see the TV hot.
I hadn't learned anything about cooling systems at that point. <laughs> what, you, what you saying, Pastor Davis? Fear could come in. Fear could come in because you don't have a cooling system. I don't know anything about HVAC yet. Jerome don't. Janet don't. So now you got a problem. You can operate in fear. Or you just own up to it. <laughs> Say, yeah, we did it. We've been watching it for a long time. We didn't did all of our homework. We didn't have anything else to do. You got to walk through this thing now. I mean, the only reason you don't want us watching TV is because you want us to do the homework, you want us to clean up, you want to, we did all of that. <laughs> what are you saying, Pastor David? What I'm saying is we get afraid when we don't have the ability to fix something. Couldn't fix that. Couldn't cool it down fast enough. So you learn from these things. Life is like that. Fear comes when you have a sense of powerlessness accompanied by a crisis. A crisis reminds us that we're imperfect people. I hope this helping somebody today. A crisis reminds us that we're imperfect people. A crisis can be deep and complicated. Sometimes when we're in a crisis, we feel like we can't take on one more thing. Therein lies the challenge. You and I taking it on instead of saying, this is the Lord's. A crisis should cause us to raise our hands in desperation and say, Lord, here am I. God, he allows a crisis moment in order for him to show himself strong on our behalf, but in order for us to recognize his almighty power. You see, it is in the middle of the crisis that God wants us to move from knowing about him to knowing him deeper. He wants us to move from words to action, glory to God. He wants us to remember his faithfulness. He wants us to trust him and to depend on him in the midst of the crisis, in the midst of the madness, and to praise him for his goodness, for his majesty, and his wondrous works. Because that's who he is. God, he recognizes our imperfections, but he doesn't excuse them. See, God has great mercy upon his people. God has every right to bring down his wrath on us, but all too often he does not. But he does not. God has every right to, but he doesn't. We're wondering, when is he going to bring the wrath? We have to be adjusted to God in order for him to respond. We have to be adjusted to God in order for him to respond to us. I want you to write that down. I must adjust to God. God doesn't adjust to me. I have to adjust to God. He is constantly, consistently the same, and I have to adjust to God. God is a holy and an unchanging God. And the an everlasting and ever loving God. He never fails. He never falters. And so I close with these things. This is so important. God will not only give me a specific word, for my specific situation. But here's what else God will do. Whatever God reveals to us, he has revealed in the Bible already. We have to turn to Scripture during a crisis for our solution. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 9. Look at 2 Peter 1 and 9, my final verse. 2 Peter 1 and 9. 
God, he never fails. He never falters. And here's 2 Peter. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and had forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. You see, when we turn to Scripture during the crisis for our solution, God, he reveals to us and he brings us to a place of where he purges us and brings us into the prominence of God. So my words, I close with this. Your crisis is not the final word. I'll say that again. Your crisis, my crisis, our crisis is not the final word. It might look like the final word because you're being overwhelmed. It might feel like the final word because you're afraid. You might think it's the final word because you don't know what to do. But it's not the final word. Why? Because the final word belongs to the Lord. 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 I want you to write this down. Never let feelings... Sit in judgment over your faith. Never let feelings sit in judgment over your faith. You and I must always let our faith sit in judgment over our feelings. We must always let our faith sit in judgment over our feelings. I shouldn't waver in my faith. You should waver in your faith. But our feelings are subject to change. They're subject to change at any moment, at any time. Our feelings are subject to change, but my faith must always sit in judgment over how I feel. When the enemy is coming in like a flood, praise the Lord. When you're being overwhelmed, praise the Lord. When things don't look any better, praise the Lord. When you don't understand what you're going through, praise the Lord. When you don't feel your best, praise the Lord. Yes, amen. When it looks like everybody done walked off and left you, praise the Lord. What are you saying, Pastor Davis? What I'm saying today, Abundant Life, is don't get too sophisticated to bless the name of the Lord. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noonday. Praise him when the sun go down. Praise him when you don't feel like it. Praise him when the hellhounds are on your tracks. Praise him in the midst of the crisis, in the midst of being overwhelmed, in the midst of when things don't look like they're going to get no better. Praise his holy name. Because the battle is not yours, it's not mine, it's the Lord's. Praise God in your crisis. My time is up and yours is too today. Put those hands together. And give him praise. Jehoshaphat and the children. We are grateful that you have connected with us on our live stream. As you have received the word of God, perhaps you desire to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Rededicate your life back to him and or become a member of Abundant Life Worship Center. The Bible is clear in Romans 10 verse 9 on how you can receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For rededication, when you renew your vow to the Lord or rededicate, you are making a heartfelt decision communicated to God through prayer. 
1 John 1 verse 8 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. James 4 verse 8 says, Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. We would love the opportunity to connect with you as you rededicate your life back to Jesus Christ. For church membership, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 1 says, But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it had pleased him. Jeremiah 3 verse 15 says, And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. You have heard that no man is an island. This certainly is true in the body of Christ. God has a pastor for each of his children. No one is exempt. Even pastors have pastors. On today, if you've decided to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, rededicate your life back to Jesus, and are become a member of Abundant Life Worship Center, please contact us at 706-592-9221. We invite you to meet us at 2070 Brown Road, Hepzibah, Georgia, on Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 o'clock p.m., for in-person worship. You can also watch us via live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and our website, www.alwc.net. We invite you to connect with us through our various social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We are grateful for the vision that God has given us and the partners who make it possible. If you would like to sow into our vision, please see the information on the screen. Thank you for worshiping with us. From the depths of our hearts, we appreciate you sharing your time with us. May you and your family walk in whole life prosperity.